Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Cohey here. Welcome to part seven. I'm calling this one intermediate part modeling concepts. And for some of you, this will be intermediate. Some of you, it'll be basic and some of you, it'll be advanced. Trust me, you can't make everybody on YouTube happy. So um, let's get started by creating a new document. Um, you saw that I hit the plus, I hit save, and I'm going to insert that blank document into this assembly. Um, just like I have in, in all the previous um, six videos of this series, I'm using bottom-up modeling um, and the edit in place feature to be able to edit that referenced component in the assembly um, while I have the assembly open. Real cool feature that we're really highlighting here as part of this series. So I've done everything that I've done um, in, in, in all the previous videos as well. I started a sketch, I projected geometry. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is rather than to continue editing this part with the assembly open, um, I'm gonna exit out of edit in place. I'm gonna save the assembly, um, which will also save the, uh, um, the part file. And I'm gonna close the assembly out. Um, in some cases, you're gonna to wanna to do this. You're not always going to want to be using edit in place uh, and have the assembly open because you might wanna close the assembly for somebody else to do some work on it. Um, and now that I have all the information that I need down at the part level, um, I can just have the part open and I can fly along and when I'm ready to push the update to the rest of the team, um, we'll do just that. So I've got my sketch. Um, remember I projected that all this geometry forward and I'm gonna use this as my base feature, start an extrusion and you know, I'm starting to model rocking and rolling here. Um, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna create um, an offset work plane. Now an offset work plane is used when you wanna sketch out in space, right? So this type of work plane, I choose the reference plane, determine the distance, and now I have the geometry that I need um, to loft two um, profiles um, to create the shape that I'm looking for. So the first profile, I'm just gonna edit the existing sketch, um, sketch the circle that will be profile one. And next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a sketch on this offset work plane. I'm gonna project the center um, of, the, uh, of the other circle. Um, so I have an appropriate reference point. And I'll start a, just a circle command and type in my diameter, nothing new here, right? With the loft command though, um, loft command is dependent on two or more sketches in order to create the geometry. Uh, if you only had one sketch in a direct line, you wouldn't use loft, you'd use extrude, right? Um, in, the, in this series, this is the first time we've used the loft command. So basically all you do is uh, select your profile um, and all the geometry in profile one, select your second profile uh, and the geometry within it, determine the operation, join type, um, and then you can change the transitions as well. So rather than a direct line transition, what I want uh, is, is, is more of a curved uh, approach here. Again, we're not getting real advanced in the loft command uh, for this example, um, but I have the shape that I'm looking for. I didn't want that direct line. Okay, cool. So got my loft done. Um, I've got a flat surface there, so I'll start a new sketch because um, I'm just going to um, sketch out the uh, the circle uh, for the threads. I'm going to throw some threads on here uh, here pretty soon um, and just extrude that out with a join type operation and I've got the geometry that I'm looking for. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, I've got a hole that goes all the way through this thing and it, it's, it's, I have all the basic geometry that I need to, to blow the, the hole through. So. Let's go ahead and turn on the uh, visibility of the first sketch. Notice I didn't create a new sketch. The geometry was there. It already existed in one sketch. Again, that kind of that CAD discipline that we've been talking about during this series. Um, you know, try to, again, keep your sketches at a minimum um, and use the geometry that's there uh, as you need it. So I'll use the chamfer command to knock off the edge here, uh, one millimeter chamfer, and then I'll do a one millimeter fillet and you can see these dialog boxes popping up and my cursor's not moving. I'm using the shortcut keys. Okay, so F, fill it. I'm using the S key to bring up commands um, that I use a lot. Here are the thread. And uh, now I've got the geometry that I need. So, you know, get used to using hot keys, right-click menus, your S key, whatever you can start using to make yourself fast, right? That's, that's really what you want to do. 
So I've started to sketch on the front side of this. I'm gonna use project geometry um, to bring um, my whole position where this thing mounts up. And what I'm sketching out here is just a 10 millimeter, a um, little bit of a relief cut. So I need access to place a, um, a screw here, but you can see where I need to place it is gonna, there's, there's some material interfering. So in this use of the extrude command, I'm gonna use a two-sided extrude, both cuts uh, in the operation. So in one direction, I say, I'm say i saying blow all the way through any geometry that's in the way here. So I, I, need, I need to be able to place a screw there. And then on the back side of it, I want it to, to inset a half a millimeter so that when I, when I tighten the screw in, it, uh, um, it falls right into place. Okay, um, now I'm gonna place uh, the hole. Um, I'm putting an M5 in this, I believe. So here I'm saying I just want a clearance hole uh, as an M5 and I'm good to go. Apparently I just got an email. Um, and everybody's probably checked their own email when they heard that email ring over the microphone. <laughs> I'd love to hear if anybody's guilty of that. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, is pattern this. I'm gonna do a circular pattern because I have a circular reference here. Um, and I, again, I could have done that four different times. I could have done that in the sketch and, and everything, but I, I just think that a circular pattern in this particular instance is a much more efficient um, modeling practice. I only had to do it once. I pattern, I only had to model it once. I pattern it once and I have the four features that I'm looking for. Okay. All right. So that's it. Um, I've modeled this thing all up. I, I recorded this one at real time speed. I didn't speed it up. Um, I've got a little bit of feedback on some of the places we've posted these videos, um, that I'm going too fast. Um, keep in mind that I'm, I'm going fast on purpose, trying to make these engaging, a little bit entertaining, try to lay down a joke every now and again. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely not intending these to be follow along, uh, click by click, um, step by step guides. Um, so if the pace is a little bit faster, sorry, that's really not what we're intending out of this series, um, but nevertheless. Um, so I've saved the part, I opened up the assembly, the assembly said, hey, you know, you've got some parts that need updated. I went ahead and updated. The assembly got all the new updates. I've created a copy because um, I want two instances and I'm using joints and I keep teasing I'm gonna do a joint video, but plus me, I trust me, I am going to do a joint video. Um, but I'm gonna use joints to position that thing in space. And, um, and there we go. We've got our water inlet outlet. A um, few little good nuggets in there. I hope you picked up a thing or two. It is a Monday, um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep carrying on this series. Appreciate everybody's comments and feedback. Have a great day.